Hey guys, Bradley Washer here, and in this quick tip video, we're gonna talk a little bit about skyboxes and them inside of the Unreal Engine. And you can see from this blueprints level that we have outside the window, not only kind of clouds and a sky, but also if we increase the speed of the camera here a little bit, um, and we go up to this window, what you'll notice is that it, it is a pretty convincing outside world. So you might be asking yourself, if you're just getting started, how do they go about making skyboxes for video games? And what are some common techniques for making them? Well, let's dissect this a little bit. So I'm gonna fly outside this window. And the first thing you'll notice is that this first building here is actually real geometry. And what that does is it helps give us a sense of parallaxing. So any objects that um, actually have depth to them as we move around will give us a sense of scale and size. The next thing they do with their skybox in the scene, which is kind of important and not typical, I would say this is less typical depending on how it's done, is you can see if I click on this building card here, I can get a little gizmo. If I move it, it moves all the background with it. And what you'll notice is that this is actually a giant card with um, the equivalent of a um, transparent texture. And you'll see at the end here where you can see it more. So it's opaque, solid down here, and it fades off. Um, the thing about transparent textures in though, uh, especially in Unreal, is that it's either fully opaque, which you wouldn't be able to get transition, it's referred to what is called as a cutout material, which would be a hard kind of line, which they could have done in this situation, and then also transparent. And you can see what's actually happening is that they're kind of fading these buildings back so that it kind of feels like it fades off to fog. And how they've kind of done it is they've kind of made this taco shape or boat shape out of two of these planes that kind of wrap around and then meet at the ends. How they get around this distortion at the end is you can see that they've kind of have it where the building kind of looks like it actually mirrors across and you could imagine ah, maybe an intersection actually intersection in real life actually looking like that but what they also do is they just keep the windows in positions in this hallway where you really don't see um that kind of transition unless you kind of have to peek your head to the side but because they line up and they mirror it just kind of makes this mirrored surface now if we were to take this scene and and delete this plane out what you'll notice, let me take out both, is that we still have a pretty good sky. Um, we got some clouds, we have this sphere, and so it's the question is how do you make something like this? So if I click on this mesh, I'm gonna hit F11 to come back out of that preview, you'll see we have a mesh called an SM Sky Sphere, and on it are two different materials. So if we look at this, this is the, um, the static mesh, and this is the actual material on it. So if I open up this material and I drag it over, a couple things you can notice about it. If I try to move around, there's a sun in it. If I move backwards, you can kind of see we're getting this um, effect where this is actually mirrored in the up and the bottom. And we have a couple different things. So lighting is pushed through this vectorized information. So RGB is actually, think of it as XYZ. Um, so if I move this around, I can move that sun around in here and they can edit the color with this and we can color some of the different items. If we open it up in terms of the event graph here, what you're really seeing is um, a vector. So XYZ represented by RGB um, being used against the camera, dotted, just check its angle, uh, multiplying it by some math and some sun color and using a mask to basically position and create the sun that we see in the sky. The other thing right here is how we are making a gradient between the two colors that allows us to maybe change it. And I'll here ultimately what we have is a texture being panned around its UV coordinates that looks kind of like this texture right here. And if we open this up, you can see it's actually just kind of this clouds and it gets kind of crunched at the bottom and a little crunch at the top. And I'll show you why that is here in a second when we look at the model. So again, coming out of that texture, it's just using a default color because we it's just basically white laid over a color. Doing some multiplication to change its intensity. And all this is fed into emissive color. And the reason why we don't use base color is because the sky sphere, so the thing that actually has the sky on it, 
we don't want it to actually respond to light. We want it to be the light source. So if we set it to emissive color, we're not gonna have to have any additional lights that light up this surface or pay for um, light maps or anything like that in terms of cost. So what I wanna look at now, if I bring that down is again, if we click on this sky sphere and we come over to this mesh, we can hit the magnifying glass and we'll find it in the project. And this is actually in the defaults in the engine. So if we come into uh, map templates, sky, you can find this SM sky sphere um, in the project that should be underneath uh, engine content. So you should have this by default. If you don't, you can install some of the engine default content. So from here, what I ended up doing was um, you can right click on any static mesh um, and you can see right here in its name, SM stands for static mesh, sky sphere, static mesh. If you go to asset actions and you export, we can actually take this mesh out of Unreal and take a look at it. Now, the only caveat is that when we do this, what ends up happening is uh, we'll get an FBX file and it's just a standard 3D file asset, and but it'll be triangulated. So we're gonna have a bunch of extra information in the model that we'll have to work around. Now, if I open this up in Maya, which I have right here, let me move this out of the way. What you'll notice is that um, when we bring it in, we ex import it into Maya. So you would do is file import. And then the only thing you might have to do is you'll spawn kind of inside and you need to zoom out. Um, if you can't see your sky sphere in here, you can click this little camera. And what you need to do is set the far clipping vein much, much higher. If this is too low, you'll notice that uh, it just kind of disappears and you're like, what can I see? The long short of it is that this sphere is very large. Um, that's one thing to take. So if you were to make one of these, what you'd ultimately would do is you would take a sphere like this and you would come up to um, mesh display and reverse. And you might be saying, okay, what did that do? Well, you can notice it turned black, but what it did is it took every face. So all these polygon faces have a normal direction. By default, they're pointing out so we could see the sphere. And what we did is we actually inverted it so that all the spheres faces are facing in. And because it's so big, it kind of acts like the sky around the earth. So if we look in here, we can see this. Now, the next thing is how do we unwrap this or how should we lay out our UVs so that we can use it in Unreal. And again, if you were to make your own, we're gonna look at the UVs as they are on this uh, asset that was exported from Unreal. And if I kind of have a moment here to squish some stuff around, what you'll notice is, let me close the outliner here. Uh, doo -doo -doo, there we go. What you'll see is uh, we have a lot of noise because of all the triangulation. But what I like to do is select my mesh, come over here in the UV editor, go to UV, select one UV, and then hold down control and right click and then go to UV shell. That will select a whole island. And then we can just shift that off. And what you'll notice is if I do it to the other one, select one UV, so right click, go to UV, hold down control and right click, and go to UV shell. And what it should do is move the whole thing. These ones actually are unstitched and sometimes this is a problem of bringing it um, out of the engine. Um, actually, let me undo, there might be something going on here that got goofed up. So actually, I'm just gonna re-import it just to make sure, uh, cause I was experimenting with this mesh before. So let's import um, SM sky sphere. So we have this. So again, when it got exported, all these white lines are, it's broken. But for now, we're gonna kind of ignore that. And I just wanna show you a little bit about the setup here on this mesh. So from here, you can see that basically, if we go to face mode and I select all these, we have the equivalent of the top. And over here, if I select all these, we have basically the bottom of the square. And because they're overlapping each other, we end up mirroring the, um, the sphere. Now. What you also see is that there's an edge running down the side here and running down this, and then there is a loop of cut faces along the top. And you can kind of see over here in the UV editor as I spin around it, that each one of these triangles has been cut and laid out with a, with a cut so that they're as flat as possible with a little bit of distortion. So ultimately in your skybox, 
the very, very, very top here will have a little bit of an artifact slash weird look to it, but it'll be so minor because it's um, it's so far up and kind of pinched that it won't it won't matter too much. And especially on the lower part, um, usually you would have your ground plane or something else in the way you would never see the bottom. But hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea of how the sky sphere is laid out. Um, again, they're overlaid and they're used the full thing. So the idea being that if anything you put on the horizon here is going to go down and up. And well, ultimately you could paint in your own sky texture here. And you know it's going to get wrapped all the way around. And there will just be a little distortion at the very top. So pro tip might be not to have any clouds um, or any... Um, small details that would uh, give artifacts across these triangles but more of a solid color and that'd be a good way to avoid any kind of artifacting the other thing would be to make sure that whatever you do on one edge just like a tiling texture is the same on the other side so if you were to make your own texture you might be able to take it in Photoshop let's say or substance and just offset or have it tile across the seam so again in closing I hope this explains a little bit about how skies are set up in games. They're usually on a sphere. Sometimes additional cards are added in uh, to give an, a sense of depth. And then some real geo can be used, again, to fake um, some parallaxing and some more occlusion. So hopefully this helps you guys get a start into sky spheres, and I'll see you in the next one.